मिनी गेटजंग फार्माकोलॉजी चैप्टर नंबर 45 आज करेंगे विच इज अबाउट अनदर क्लास ऑफ एंटीबायोटिक्स इंक्लूडिंग अमाइनो ग्लाइकोसाइड्स एंड स्पेक्टिनोमाइसिन तो इनके मोड ऑफ एक्शन देख लेते हैं सबसे पहले इन द एंटोमाइक्रोबियल ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ इन्फेक्शन मल्टीपल डेली डोजेज रेजीम्स ट्रेडिशनली हैव बिन डिजाइन टू मेंटेन सीरम कॉन्सेंट्रेशन अब द एम आई सी लेवल्स फॉर एज लॉन्ग एज पॉसिबल सो द पॉइंट इज कि डोजेजिंग और फॉर्मुलेशन इस तरह से प्रस्क्राइब करते हैं फिजिशियंस और उनकी कोशिश सारी ये होती है कि एक यू नो इफेक्टिव लेवल मेंटेन किया जाए उन ड्रग्स का जो कि विच इज़ यूजली अब द एम जितने ज़्यादा दिन के लिए हम ये कर सकें पर्पज़ ये होता है कि द ड्रग इज़ अवेलेबल एट ऑल द टाइम्स इन इनफ कॉन्सेंट्रेशन सो दैट द बैक्टीरिया कैन नॉट प्रोलीफ्रेड हाउ एवर इन वीवो इफेक्टिवनेस ऑफ सम एंटीबायोटिक्स इंक्लूडिंग अ माइनोक्लाइकोसाइड्स रिजल्ट फ्राम कॉन्सेंट्रेशन डिपेंडेंट क्लिंग एक्शन सो दैट्स ऑल टूगेदर डिफरेंट फिनोमिना जिसके बारे में भी हम थोड़ी बात करेंगे एज द प्लाज्मा लेवल्स इज इंक्रीज अब द एम आई सी द अमाइनोक्लाइकोसाइड्स किल एन इंक्रीजिंग प्रपोर्शन ऑफ बैक्टीरिया एंड डू सो एट मोर रैपिड रेट मैनी एंटीबायोटिक्स इंक्लूडिंग पेनिसलेंस सेफेलोस्परेंस दे कॉज टाइम डिपेंडेंट किलिंग ऑफ माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिज्म वेर इन देयर इन वीवो एफिकेसी इज डायरेक्टली रिलेटेड टू द टाइम अब एम आई सी एंड बिकम्स इन डिपेंडेंट ऑफ द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन सो दीज आर टू डिफरेंट फिनोमिना विच यू हैव टू रिमेंबर एंड एज अ फिजिशियन यू शुड बी नोइंग कि अगर आप अमाइनो ग्लाइकोसाइड्स प्रेस्क्राइब कर रहे हैं सो इट्स मोर रिलेटेड विद अ कॉन्सेंट्रेशन रादर दैन द टाइम फॉर विच द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन द ब्लड स्टेज अब द एम आई सी लेवल्स जबकि सेफोलोस्पोरिनस में पेनिसलिनस में इज द टाइम विच इज इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर विच द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ द ड्रग रिमेंस अब द एम आई सी लेवल सो दीज आर टू डिफरेंट कॉन्सेप्ट ऑल टूगेदर माइनो ग्लाइकोसाइड्स आर ऑल्सो केपेबल ऑफ एग्जर्डिंग अ पोस्ट एंटीबायोटिक इफेक्ट यानी एंटीबायोटिक के बाद का इफेक्ट ऑब्वियसली सच दैट देयर किलिंग एक्शन कंटिन्यूज वैन देयर प्लाज्मा कॉन्सेंट्रेशन या उनका लेवल्स हैव इवन डिक्लाइन बिलो द मेजरेबल लेवल्स तो काफ़ी देर तक भी यानी ख़त्म हो गया इनका लेना भी ख़त्म हो गया पेशेंट खा भी नहीं रहा इनके लेवल्स भी बॉडी में कम हो रहे हैं बट द पेशेंट इज स्टिल हैविंग द इफेक्ट्स ऑफ अमाइनो ग्लाइकोसाइड्स कॉन्जिक्वेंटली अमाइनो ग्लाइकोसाइड्स हैव ग्रेटर एफिकेसी वैन एडमिनिस्टर्ड एज अ सिंगल लार्ज डोज देन वैन गिवन इन मल्टीपल स्मॉलर डोजेज देखिए ये सारी बातें इंपॉर्टेंट हैं क्योंकि कल को अगर आप पेशेंट को प्रिस्क्राइब कर रहे हैं एक पर्टिकुलर ग्रुप ऑफ एंटीबायोटिक्स और ये सारी इन्फॉर्मेशन आपको नहीं पता देन यू विल बी मिसिंग द शॉर्ट दी टॉक्सिसिटी ऑफ अमाइनो ग्लाइकोसाइड डिपेंड ऑन बोथ द क्रिटिकल प्लाज्मा कॉन्सेंट्रेशन एंड ऑन द टाइम दैट सच लेवल इज एक्सीडेड द टाइम अब सच अ थ्रेश होल्ड इज शॉर्टर विद एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ अ सिंगल लार्ज डोज सो अगर आप बार बार रेपिडिट दे रहे हैं यानी सुबह दी दोपहर दी शाम दी सो एक्चुअली द टाइम इंटरवेल फॉर गिविंग द नेक्स्ट डोज इज वेरी वेरी यू नो दैट्स रादर फ्रीकुंट सो इट्स बेटर टू गिव दैम वन डोज विच इज दैन गुड इन टर्म्स ऑफ साइड इफेक्ट्स एज वेल ओके so um, that was all about the general stuff which you must remember about amino glycoside group of antibiotics now pharmacokinetically these are the chemicals which are structurally related to amino sugars attached by the glycosidic uh, bonds together so glycosidic type linkages hote hain molecules mein they are polar compound not absorbed after oral administration and must be given intramuscularly or intravenously for systemic effects another important point they have limited tissue penetration and do not readily cross the blood brain barrier another important point glomerular filtration is the major mode of excretion which means in the urine and the plasma levels of these drugs are greatly affected by changes in the renal function so if the kidneys are not working fine they are not secreted their levels in the blood go high excretion of the amino glycosides is directly proportional to creatinine clearance which is again related to the function of the kidneys of so the kidneys are working fine the release of amino glycosides from the body is okay with normal renal function the elimination of the half life is about 2 to 3 uh, hours but this is only when the kidneys are working fine and you have to do dose adjustments if the kidneys are not working properly for traditional dosing regime peak serum levels are measured 30 to 60 minutes after administration so that is the time patient ko jab aap drug de rahe hain this is the time when the peak levels are there in the body with only uh, you know once daily dosing peak levels are less important since they will naturally be higher at the time of dosing so that's not a very high yield line but uh, this heading which talked about the general stuff of amino glycoside and then the pharmacokinetic profile profile all very important discussion now the mechanism of action before we talk about mechanism of resistance which is also a big problem 
These uh, are basically bactericidal inhibitors of protein synthesis in the bacteria. Their penetration through the bacterial cell envelope requires oxygen-dependent active transport. So these drugs have to go inside the bacterial molecule in order to stop the protein synthesis. Okay, amino glycosides carry. Uh, they can be, uh, you know, in key entry enhanced by cell wall synthesis inhibitors, which may be the basis for antimicrobial synergism. Synergism word ka matlab yu hota hai ki if this is the bacteria, aap drug A de rahe aur drug B de rahe. If they work synergistically, so in dono ko saath dene se drug A ka jo effect hai, wo enhance ho jayega. So basically, drug A agar hum kehte hain is the um, amino glycoside, it has to go inside the bacterial cell. So drug B is basically the cell wall synthesis inhibitor agar ye bhi saath dein to iski entry amino glycoside ki into the bacteria will become easier and therefore they two work uh, very nicely together once inside the cell the amino glycosides bind to the 30s ribosomal subunit and interfere with protein synthesis in three different ways number one they block the formation of the initiation complex for protein synthesis they can also cause misreading of the messenger rna just say incorporation of the non functional protein peptides usme enter ho jayenge and the protein will no more be functional and they also inhibit translocation amino glycosides may also disrupt polysomal structure so jo polysome banta hai jisme pura ribosome aur protein uh, synthesis ka phenomena chal raha hota hai that is also disrupted so remember these three mechanisms uh, which are being utilized by this group of antibiotics to kill microorganisms but like other drugs there is also resistance reported streptococci including pneumonia species for example and uh, also enterococci they are relatively resistant to genta and uh, most other amino glycosides and they obviously have developed some mechanism for resistance however the primary mechanism of resistance to amino glycoside especially in gram negative bacteria involves plasmid mediated formation of inactivating enzymes so the bacteria start producing enzymes which make the drug inactive these enzymes are group transferases that catalyze the acetylation of a main function of the transfer of the phosphoryl in the adenyl groups too much detail to remember but just remember that these bacteria produces enzymes which are transferases which make uh, changes in the fundamental structure of the amino glycosides individual amino glycosides um, have uh, varying susceptibilities to enzymes for example transferases produced by enterococci can inactivate amikacin genta and tobramycin but they are not effective against streptomycin so those organisms which are producing these transferases are well treated by streptomycin however amikacin is often resistant to many enzymes that inactivate genta so this is basically you have to remember all these things by yourself uh, there is not much that i can uh, make you understand in this particular uh, paragraph okay but remember resistance is an important issue and for every drug particularly the antibiotics it is uh, usually asked in the examination tell us the uh, you know resistance mechanism now when are these drugs used what are the clinical uses the main difference uh, among the individual amino glycosides lie in their activities against the organism particularly gram negative organisms rots to be very specific so genta tobra and amikacin are important drugs for the treatment of infections caused by look aerobic gram negative bacteria and when i tell you aerobic they include um, e coli klebsiella proteus enterobacter pseudomonas as well as serratia these amino glycosides have activity against strains of hemophilus uh, shigella even and morexella cateralis okay so that's the uh, scope treatment profile for these three drugs listed here in most cases amino glycosides are used in combination with uh, cell wall inhibitors for example beta lactam antibiotics when used alone amino glycosides are not reliably effective in the treatment of infections caused particularly by the gram positive cocci so add these bits and they work in synergy with the amino glycosides streptomycin so you see these three in ke bhi humne uses dekhe now the streptomycin mycin in combination particularly with penicillins is often more effective in enterococcal carditis then regimens that include other amino glycosides so they have specific profiles which you have to remember okay then there are um, you know um, owing to their toxic potential neomycin kenamycin now are uh, usually not used okay genta is also available only for tropical use because they have a huge toxicity profile now natilimycin has been used for treatment of serious infections caused by organisms resistant to other amino so that's a relatively newer drug and uh, 
इसका भी प्रॉब्लम ये है कि अब दिस इज नो मोर अवेलेबल इन द यू एस बिकॉज ऑफ सम इशूज एसोसिएटेड विद ड्रग्स सो बेसिकली वी आर स्टिल लेफ्ट विद द वन विच हैव बिन ट्रेडिशनली बींग यूज A pectinomycin is an um, amino cyclotol related to amino glycoside. Structurally, it's a derivative, not exactly the uh, same structure as amino glycoside, but closely related. Its sole use is as a backup drug, administered IM as a single dose for treatment of gonorrhea, but always a backup drug. You first go to the other organisms, so uh, other uh, other members of the. Uh, antibiotic group if they are not working then this is a backup drug remember this is an important point always in the examination you have to talk about the backup drugs as backup drugs never start your answer with the backup drugs okay first talk about the main players and then only you can move on to the backup drugs now these drugs have uh, considerable toxicity profile so autotoxicity the first one Uh, hearing problems obviously auditory or the vestibular damage well that, that's serious stuff may occur with amino glycosides and may be irreversible so even more serious auditory impairment is more likely with amikacin and kanamycin vestibular dysfunction is more likely with genta and tobra important profile autotoxicity risk is proportional to the plasma levels and thus especially high if dosage is not appropriately modified in a patient with renal dysfunction so if there is kidney not working you keep giving a minor glycoside levels go up they will go and damage the uh, air systems and other effect that you have to remember is there also nephrotoxicity and this is kind of a vicious cycle the drugs are nephrotoxic they will damage the kidney and by virtue of this their excretion will be disturbed and the levels will go up so renal toxicity usually takes uh, the form of acute tubular necrosis atn is what is caused by amino glycosides the adverse effects which is often reversible you stop the drug and the kidney becomes okay is more common in elderly patient and in those concurrently receiving also m4 tyrosine b so glyco uh, amino glycosides plus the m4 b is not a good combination same goes with cephalosporins and vanco gentamicin and tobramycin are most nephrotoxic these two of the amino glycosides very dangerous for kidneys okay then neuromuscular blockage although it is rare a cure like block may occur at the high dose so they can actually cause the neuromuscular junction blockage and the problem would be if the respiratory muscles are involved you see respiratory paralysis serious stuff skin reactions uh, in the form of allergy may occur in the patients and uh, contact dermatitis may also occur if uh, somebody is uh, dealing with the drug itself such as the workers in the pharmaceutical industry for example neomycin is the agent most likely to cause uh, allergy i know pharma is boring because you have to remember quite a lot of things but that's the way it is many things make sense and they can be explained very logically but some of the things are just uh, you know the memory stuff you have to remember them and with this we are done with this particular chapter 